Hey, how are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm big. Um, big screen. Someone asked me in the Patreon Discord how I you create the the lines at the top of the database when I'm scrolling through doing R squared testing and also an average um, of each stat in each column compared to like top players with top 24 seasons. And um, happy to show you how I do everything. But again, that formula and results tab are my actual results. I, I do that test at the top basically for a quick eye reference and not to get all nerd flexy on you, but like I have a pretty good idea of what the results should be for every column in that database. And I'm guessing you don't. Uh, you strange viewer who's never seen me before is like, what kind of weird video is this? This is a small, a small how-to in an Excel sheet, so you're probably in the wrong place. Feel free to, you know, call me a nerd and move on. Um, so I just want to say these are not actual results. I use them as a quick reference because I have a large familiarity with what the results should be. And you can get some broad understanding, like how conference is better than team and team is better than the actual is um then the actual stat is better than both and age adjusted stats are better than all three and it tells you some of the things i'm always talking about with nfl statistics but like then you can't use those numbers so you know serious face on for a second but for real if i ever see you saying on twitter or anywhere else the results in pa howdy's database reflect what i'm about to show you like i will let people know that is an outright lie like, I, 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 not to mince words, I have a formula and results tab. Those are the results I have for anyone that wants to quote me. Um, and if you were to do this and then say that's a result, then I would, you know, <clears throat> nerd chess block you wherever you happen to do that and say, no, that's not a real test. That's, that's, that's BS nerding. That's a lie. <laughs> because... Sample size is everything in statistics. Sampling the types, the the players or the variables you're using is everything to if your numbers can be trusted. And this doesn't even siphon the sample down to the remotest level of relevance. Like there, for the wide receiver tab, there are play, people that play running back. There are people who haven't even declared for the NFL draft. Those that don't didn't even play a snap in the NFL versus those at DeAndre Hopkins. It's it's way too messy in there because we want to collect as much information about as many players as possible, depending on what you might want to talk about or read about or go find out questions for. But if you perform statistical tests on it as it is, it's not a good sample. So ugh, consider yourself nerd chess blocked. Like, I get it. I do it in the video. I have it in there when I'm doing the video. So you're like, ah, that looks useful. I want to do it. The formula and results tab has actual results. Like, for real, work really hard on those. Use those. If you want to just get better at writing formulas, and you... Great. Um, uh, yeah, great. I'm uh, happy to show you how, but, like, I, I full-on warn you. Like, this is not an actual test. Um, I feel comfortable doing it because I, I, I've done the actual testing. So, uh, yeah, let me show you how. It should be a quick video. It should be nice. It should be fun. Um, we're going to go full, sc fun sc full screen. Um, and just to be clear here, I've actually got how-to videos on how to write this formula and how to lock cells, which is really the only two things you need to know. But someone asked specifically how I add it into the database, and apparently those weren't good enough uh, to get uh, them there, which makes me worry that they, they would think they're actually results because... Like, those two things combined should... Sh I mean, that's how, but... Um, let's go look. If I can find the button. Yeah, uh, so here's the latest database I just uh, updated with Seth Williams' correct date of birth. And when I put it on screen, it often looks like this, with various columns that I either hide or I have a few showing at the top here. I'm showing... Uh, I've tested R squared versus points per game in the first year for every column in the database and also the average for top 24 players. So let's delete them and I'll show you how I write them just just real quick, re, re, real quick, quick, some quick nerding. All right, and so the R squared formula is really simple. It's R S Q. 
easy to remember because it sounds like R squared when you say it like phonetically. All right, um, so the R squared formula in Excel and Google Sheets work the same way, and also they will tell you how to write the formula. They've got this little thing that pops out, and if you push the FX tab, it literally tells you which, which each segment of that formula actually says. But again, we're doing this one real quick, so I don't want to get into it. That other how-to video goes into it a little bit further. Essentially, you want to tell it one set of variables, because that's what R squared does. It tests one set of variables against another. They're a very complex statistical test. And your only job is creating an accurate sample, which we are not going to do to create these little lines. Again, just stressing that. The one thing that we have to do, Excel is going to run a really complex formula really quickly. And the one thing we have to do, we're not even going to bother with, which is why it's junk. But there you go. And um, yeah, so we need variable Y's and variable X's. So uh, we select the first cell in the column directly below the formula. Shift, control, and the down arrow will take you all the way to the bottom of the database, and therefore you're highlighting every cell in the row directly below this formula that we're writing. Then we need a little comma, and we're going to go ahead, and you can test it against anything, but I'm typically testing against, you know, points per game average of the first three years. So I'm going to select the first cell in that column, which you can't see because of the way my screen is. There we go. Again, shift, alt, down arrow, and close brackets and the formula is written da, da, da. it created a little squared test now I've also got some formatting in there obviously and so I went to the format tab and format cells and asked it to do number with two decimal places otherwise it's gonna pop up with like at least 10 and you can also turn it into a percentage and um, R squared is typically represented in terms of decimal places but I find some people feel more comfortable where we're not real nerds and seeing it as a percentage, but either way you want to go, it's, it's just fine. Um, anyway, now because we want to test every cell, or I want to test every cell column in the database, I'm going to have to lock the cell, the variable I'm testing against. I want it to keep testing each column against points per game average of the first three years. So I'm going to lock the column or the uh, letters in this case fi by putting a little dollar sign right in front of the fi's and what the hell we'll also lock the line numbers by putting a dollar sign in front of the five and putting a dollar sign in front of the 1034 which is gonna literally no matter where we drag this formula it's always going to be testing against fi cell 5 to fi cell 1034 34 or whatever that's what locking the cell means it's just this little dollar sign i'm not going to lock this first variable at all because i'm not actually going to drag it up and down and so it's not going to move the lines i'm actually testing and i want it to shift columns because i want it to i want it to test the p value then the q value then the r value or in this case the post squared versus the 20 percent breakout age versus the 30 percent breakout age and so i want those to shift and so those I just leave blank. All right, and then we drag it. And because I've locked this variable set, it means I'm still testing against points per game over um, points per game average year one to three. And it's actually now, as you can see through this fancy blue highlight that Excel puts up, I'm now testing against the next column in the database. And so we just drag it all the way over to create what is exactly not an actual test telling you anything about these numbers. I can't stress that enough. And the next formula I often use when I've got those little columns at the top of my database or my version of the database is an average if s formula, which is an average if whatever conditions I want to add. So I want to look at the average of the pre-draft score if um, the player actually had one top 24 season or not. So again, same process, highlight all the cells. Now there is some fancy little formula writing in here where I use the quotation mark, I use the greater than sign, equal sign, close the quotation, the ampersand or the and sign, and then the, the number one, which literally says, go look in these cells and find anything that is one and, or greater than one. So any player that has had one or more top 24 season. But because I want to lock those cells, I have to lock the letters FC and also the numbers 5 to 1034 or whatever it is. Um, and again, you can see the little formula I've written there. In the conditions, I'm combining a text. That's why I use the quotation marks. 
um, with a number, so greater than or equal to one. But because this formula doesn't recognize greater than or equal to, I put it in a little quotation formula, and then they added the ampersand so it can combine it with the number one. And then when you press enter, even though the formula, the way it has to be written, can't recognize it, Excel will recognize what I mean. And if any of that was too quick, again, the how-to videos I have on how to lock cells or how to do average if s or how to do ri squared specifically, we're able to get into each of those elements a little bit more in depth. Um, but yeah, we're trying to get out of here before 50 minutes goes by. And again, because I locked the right cells, I can now drag it over and it will keep testing these new variables um, against the same condition, which is that this the only looking at players that had one top 24 season or more. That is still not a reasonable sample because there can be plenty of errors in here. What if someone typed a random one in one of these columns, so on and so forth. But it gives you some idea of what the average is, as well as a not actual test or good score can do um, so yeah that's those are the two formulas I typically write at the top of the database just for a quick eye reference for myself uh, a reminder to which ge stats generally work better or worse um, and that really only works because I know the actual results and I have a pretty good familiarity with how these stats relate to each other within each tab um, but yeah 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 cool 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 <laughs>